That's a good, pat, nice padded chair. It was our anniversary this last week, the 17th, and uh, Olivia gave me a small gift, a small little brown bag. And in this brown bag was a container of three really good cookies, a tin of a, a fruit tea, and a package of uh, instant drink mixes. Not an amazingly expensive gift, not an extravagant gift. It sounds like a quick grocery run, maybe. But uh, to me, it was, uh, as far as I can tell, the perfect gift. It was cookies. But no more than three, because I don't need more than three cookies at a time. It was the tea that we've been drinking together and our iced tea maker all week. And uh, you may have noticed that uh, wherever I go, even in the pulpit, I have my Nalgene bottle with me. And uh, if there's not tea in it, I, I use those instant drink mixes. And so to have good instant drink mixes like you put in water bottles, I, I just love those. And I was talking to Olivia afterwards, and I said, you, know, we might, you might have nailed it. This might be the, the, the gift. This might be it. This, it's a small bag, three things. We were thinking about it like Father's Day, birthday, everything from now on. There are three of them, right? Two kids, a wife. Go to Hy-Vee, tell everyone to go find one tasty thing, throw it in a bag, I'm good. Right? That, to me, that, that was this moment where action, the act of giving a gift, and intention, meaning really well and taking time to, to do it right, just lined up, and it was just, it was great. And, and we have those, those gifts, right? These gifts, they don't have to be extravagant, uh, they don't have to be amazing, but we've all received gifts where the action, the desire to, the, the giving of the gift lines up with the intention, and it just is, is a great gift. I was thinking about that uh, Jesus is talking about intention this week in the Sermon on the Mount. And I was thinking about the antithesis of that. I've received a gift. It's a gift that I also will never forget. Uh, a different type of gift, really. Uh, as many of you may know, uh, during college I was engaged to someone other than Olivia. We all make mistakes. That was mine. Uh, and I was spending the holidays with what I thought were going to be my future in-laws. And they gave me a gift. You do this at the holidays. You give a gift. And I opened up this, this box. Obviously that clothing sized box. I, you open it up and I look inside and there in the box was a gray sweatshirt. Have you ever seen me wear a sweatshirt? Like my style hasn't changed. My biggest change, I've gone from wearing brown leather loafers to brown leather boots. That's it. That's my innovation for the last decade and a half. That's as far as I've moved style-wise, right? I wear t-shirts and leather, pant, uh, leather shoes and jeans and that, that's it. I don't, I don't wear athletic gear or garb. It's just not my gig, right? And so to open this, and it's a nice gray sweatshirt, and I look at that and, and it cemented in my mind they weren't really sure why I was there and weren't really sure if they wanted me there and it was very clear, right? It was a very awkward visit and it only got worse. <laughs> action and intention, right? The action of giving the gift was not lined up with an intention of truly wanting me to be there. It hadn't really paid attention to me, right? Oh, it gets real awkward. When we've all received that, and it's that horrible moment when you open the gift and you look at it and you got you got a smile, you're right? And, yeah. Oh God, I'm I'm really bad at covering that. We've been following Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, and he goes from talking about actions and, and now he starts talking about intentions. Not just what we do, but why we do it. What we do matters, right? What we do is essential and important, and following in Jesus' footstep is something we, we do, right? If we're thinking about Jesus, then we're not actually following Jesus. We have to follow Jesus. So we're, we're following his footsteps, but not matching up actions with intentions. There's a word for that. We call it hypocrisy. Right? Uh, that, that's not a good thing. We need to line up our actions and our intentions. And, and even with the finest of actions, it is possible to have the wrong intentions. If you go the second mile, if you give uh, graciously, if you turn the other cheek, if you do all these things Jesus is talking about, but you do it so that other people will think you're so, so amazing, I mean, that, that's the wrong intention, right? You're doing it so you'll look good. That, that's horribly destructive. You really haven't done much. Now, this is admittedly kind of a fine line to walk, try to handle this. Um, Jesus does say a few verses ago, uh, a par about a paragraph ago, Jesus says, no one lights a lamp and puts it under a bushel basket. No one light put, turns on the light and then covers it, right? Jesus is not saying don't uh, do anything that other people will see. Do things 
do what is right, do what is good, help other people, uh, and your righteousness will be seen for, by others, but don't do it so that others will see it. Right? There's the difference. And, and Jesus explains this uh, three different examples. He talks about almsgiving, how we give in relationship to others. talks about fasting, which is uh, what we do ourselves. And then prayer. And we'll take prayer and save that for next week. Almsgiving, right? Almsgiving is the old-fashioned term for giving to those in need. And, and there was a practice in the first century. If you, uh, there was this belief that if you gave to those in need, you would get forgiveness. You would be given forgiveness by God. If you'd gone astray, you could sort of buy your way back into God's good graces if you gave. And so what would happen in that first century, uh, it's kind of an arid climate. Water is not easy to come by. And so if I have gone astray, I would go to someone who sold water. And I'd say, I'm good for $500. I want you to give away $500 worth of water. And we'd go to a very public place with a lot of people traveling through. And the water seller would start hollering out, thirsty, come for a drink offering. And people would come out of the crowd and they would receive this drink offering. And they would turn to the person who bought the the, the water, who is standing right next to the water seller, very obvious, sta obviously standing right there, and that person understood that what they needed to say was, God forgive thy sins, giver of drink. Right? This was this, there was this logic there, that if I needed to get right with God, I go to the water seller, pay him 500 bucks, who would announce that this amazing person was now giving away water, and then you'd come up, receive the water, and you'd say, pronounce God's forgiveness upon that person. And what Jesus has to say to those is uh, they have their reward. They have done something very publicly so that everyone will see them giving and, and they, they have received their reward. That's that they have their, that attention. What Jesus says is when you give, give in secret. And uh, in secret, is, it's, a, it's a turn of phrase and the better translation might be uh, give from the heart. Right? It's not so much that don't ever let anyone else ever see that you're giving. I mean, Jesus does say, if you light a lamp, don't put it under the bushel basket. But uh, give from the heart. Give in a way that uh, it doesn't matter whether someone sees you or not. You're giving because it is something that you're going to do, and if someone sees, great. If someone doesn't see, it doesn't matter. You are going to give anyways. This is how God gives. God sends the sun and the rain upon each and every one of us, whether we are righteous or not. Though we have had plenty of rain, we could knock that off any day now. Uh, this is the type of giving that a parent does, right? If you think of the way that a parent gives to a child, it is not a giving that is counting up, keeping track of the giving. It's not like a, a parent is keeping a check mark of how many times, a tally of how many times they had to get up at night so that when the kid turns 21, you can, okay, here, come here, come here, Timmy, let's even up. I got up for you this many hundred times and how much... Yeah, I just want you to be really grateful for how many times... No, that's not how the giving... That's not the giving uh, the way that Jesus is talking about. The giving that Jesus is talking about is giving simply because of the goodness of, of the person who, who gives. Right? Those, who Jesus, those who give, as Jesus describes, are giving out of a sense of their own love. Not worrying whether the other person is worthy or not, but just being generous. And the reward of this... You never notice how people who are generous and gracious become more and more generous and gracious? Right? And what happens to people who are stingy? What happens over time? They get stingier and stingier and stingier. Right? The reward for giving as God gives is to become more like God, more gracious and generous and satisfied in the doing. This reminds me of uh, our modern fascination with putting plaques on things. You ever notice we always want to put a plaque on something? I thought of this the first time uh, I was in seminary, and you, when you're in seminary, the lot of you can vouch for this, you, you critique everything, right? That you just turn into a kind of a pompous jerk for about a year and a half, because you can just critique everything, and you're doing it as a, with the Bible, so you, you must be right. She stuck with me through that, which is impressive, because I was a jerk. But during that time, I was on the building commission for uh, the new Divinity School expansion. And the old buildings, there was old Divinity called Gray, because it was gray. Uh, there was new Divinity, because it was new. There was a library building called the library building, because it had the books, right? Very straightforward. And then they were adding Goodson Chapel in the Westbrook building. 
And I thought to myself at the time, how much money would you have to give Duke to put your name on a building? And I started thinking about this passage, about giving it from your heart and giving it without wanting anything in return, just giving because it's the right thing to do. It's the good thing to do. It, and it especially hit home when uh, they had every room in the building was given in someone's name. Every, like, pew, every chair. And if they got hit this problem where if they'd put all the plaques everyone wanted so everyone could get their name and get all the publicity for what they'd given, it, there were going to be plaques everywhere. And so I think they finally did. It was they made like one master plaque. One ring, one plaque to rule them and all darkness bind them type of thing. Right? And they made this one master plaque with all the names of people who wanted publicity for what they'd done. And I think about the way that we do that today. We can't just watch the race. It's the Pepsi 500. You can't When's the last time a stadium was built that was just a stadium, right? The, the, the Arrowhead Stadium or something like that. Everyone has to have a name. Everyone has to put their name on it and get uh, the recognition for doing what they have done. Um, wouldn't it be, just be better in Christ, like, just, just to give? I mean, if someone figures out that you gave, fine. So what if they do it? I mean, if they don't, whatever. You just give because we follow Jesus. And yes, there is this sense that if we give, um, if someone finds out, yes, they will look better upon us. I mean, we all have mixed motives. I think the, the question, the, the real important question is, what do you give if no one knew? If you would give, whether someone knew or not, then, then you're doing okay. If you're giving, regardless of whether, whether anyone else is watching, then you are giving as Christ describes here. Your action and your intention is lining up. Fasting then becomes the second thing that Jesus presents as this other thing that we need to think about where actions and intentions get confused. It, is a, it was a common practice of the day to fast. It's what religious people did. They fasted. The disciples of John asked the disciples of Jesus, why aren't you fasting? And, and fasting was what religious people did, and, and they let everyone know it. So if you were fasting, you would you just kind of let everyone know, oh, I'm fasting. Oh, I'm so hungry. I haven't had anything to eat. I'm fasting. Right? He made a show of it. I'm exaggerating a little bit. Not by much. Right? Fasting was something so people could see how religious you were. Jesus calls the people back to an original understanding of fasting, a better understanding of fasting. For fasting, if you go back to uh, the Old Testament where it begins to be practiced, fasting was what happened when you were so wrought up, so bothered by something, that you forgot to eat. It just was secondary. You were so wrought up with a great task, or so wrought up with grief, or so wrought up with something in front of you that you simply just food, whatever. You have something to do that's in, in, in front of you, right? And if you do this for a while, go without food because you're wrought up with something important, eventually and people will notice, and, and you might be, I mean, people will see that it's happening, but what had happened in Jesus' day is people were mistaking the signs of fasting for the purpose of fasting, that you were focused on something really important, really essential. <clears throat> Jesus says to fast, not by looking miserable about it, but just do it. And one way to think about fasting um, is kind of a word play. The, to fast is to be so focused on something because you want to move fastly towards it. You want to get a move on, get there quickly, get there fast. You ever got get? You ever had something so important to do in the day that you get up, you have a quick breakfast, you start working, you look down at four o'clock in the afternoon, you, you completely skipped lunch. Right? That's fasting. You got so wrought up in something important, and, and lunch, whatever, time to do it. Right? That is the core of fasting, to, to be so focused on something important that the self-gratification and all that other stuff just falls away. Jesus is concerned here about intentions. It's, you don't look like you're fasting, you just do it. And now it is this interesting to note that Jesus assumes that we are going to fast. And so the questions we would probably want to ask is, are we fasting? Are we fasting? Are we so caught up with something that we are so passionate about in our lives that there are times when we simply just don't eat because we're just so keyed in on taking care of something important? Jesus assumes that we will be. Right? And the other thing is to ask, what are we fasting towards? Uh, 
You ever know someone who's so worried about making money they don't eat lunch during the day, they just keep on working, 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 working? You're moving fast towards making more money. And that's moving fast. It, I, I would submit it's moving fast in the wrong direction, but you're moving fast. And so not only are we fasting, but what are we fasting towards? What are we fasting about? Are we so caught up in God's dream and God's desires for what might happen or something else? Jesus is talking about action and intention here, the way that they line up, that we give uh, because it is the right thing to do. Not seeking attention, and if someone notices, that, that's fine, but not, never giving simply so that others notice. That we fast, that we move quickly with an honest passion for what is important, to seek the kingdom of God, and if someone notices, that's fine, whatever, that's not the point. We're trying to follow Jesus and get. sometimes we just get that caught up with it. It is my prayer that the Holy Spirit would move in each of us so that we would have the wisdom to discern our intentions, that we would have the fortitude to shift them where they are less than aligned with our actions. Go give great gifts. Don't give gray sweatshirts. Amen.